Hey, everybody. Very stoked about our next guests here. They are a Long Island-based band who began back in the late 90s with hits like Out There, Ordinary, and All About the Benjamins. The group was off and running with a pop rock sound that was catchy, fun, and edgy, and that led them to become the first and only rock band ever signed to Puffy's Bad Boy Records. They were even featured on the platinum-selling Godzilla soundtrack. Now, 20 years later, they have re-emerged and will be performing with Zebra on November 19th at the Paramount. And on November 18th, they will honor the life of the late great bassist, Brett Rothfeld, with a show at the Garage in Pleasantville, New York. Here they are, folks, the one and only Fuzz Bubble, Jim, Mark, and Jason. How you guys doing, man? Yeah, that was a nice introduction. Thank you, man. Beautiful. Excellent. Thanks for having us. That was great. I'm, I'm uh, very stoked to talk to you guys, man. Um, like I said, I was a fan, of, like back in, in the heyday of Fuzz Bubble when you guys were first brewing. They, you guys were the, the talk of the town. You were you buzzing hard. Um, first band signed to Bad Boy and all that stuff. Um, I, 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 and now here you are back. Fuzz Bubble is back. Uh, I want to get into the history of Fuzz Bubble, but before we do that, t tell me about the, the uh, coming back. I know you guys did cult stars from Mars and all that, but now coming back is fuzz bubble. What led to this? Jimmy, you want to feel that? Uh, huh. Who wants to, who wants to go? Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, actually, so, well, actually I could, I could start this because uh, Mark yeah, wants to it, go first. Yeah, I'll go first this time. <laughs> um, it, it all started pretty much from our friend Dave R <clears throat> who, uh, you know, was a part, uh, an integral part, which uh, we, we've been speaking about in initial to the initial, you know, fuzz bubble history with uh, funding our first demo, the lemonade uh, uh, demo sessions. And, uh, but it was just as of recent, um, right? Am I not right? I think it's Dave Roth that kind of got this rolling. Yeah. Well, he, you know, when he, he booked my other band. Right. Um, Hitman to open up for Queensryche. And I said, Hey, I I would love to play with Fuzz Bubble again. Why don't you get us, you know, get us on a cool show? Because he's a booking agent now. He books the tri-state area, uh, loaded yeah, so concerts. I, so that's how kind of it came about. Exactly. And he got his wheels spinning. He's he's booked Zebra before. He's done some uh, you know weekend stuff with them out in L.A. and he, all over. And uh, I think uh, you know he figured it makes sense. We did you know, and he got us on the gig with the Paramount, which is exciting and. Uh, We'll do the upstate one you know the whole thing is like this like we've been friends like we never we never really kind of like broke up or had like a hard we kind of just kind of dissolved right to, to right truthful and so this has been an ongoing conversation um hey we should record more stuff we should book a gig we should get together you should come on the west coast i should come on the east coast you know yeah it's been going on for a for a long time really and <clears throat> the pandemic really uh kind of influenced us you know everyone was doing all these like four square jamming videos and i'm like man you know like we really have no excuse anymore it's not 1996 technology has come a long way <laughs> yeah. right we could we could transfer files we could do recording we could we could even do stuff like this you know so it was like let's just do something so that kind of spawned being locked in the houses and everybody on you know there were no shows going on no gigs you know even regular work you know in many cases wasn't happening so we yeah. were like well this is stupid we should really do something like you know we're gonna all lose our minds and uh that turned into a little experiment that ended up being called cult stars from mars yeah. we got a bunch of guests to play on the stuff we talked brett into uh playing with us again which was really great because we really didn't you know we didn't know what was going to happen in the near future then and uh, so that ended to be some of the last stuff he played on and uh then after brett passed that like really threw everything into high gear for us which was like hey we are friends we do get along we still write music we still play no one's on this rock forever what are we doing like we really should yeah. do something so you know, like Jimmy had said, he was doing other stuff with Hitman and Mark is still playing on the island and Dave R, who is the guy that booked the shows. Again, part of the story all the way back in the beginning, 
you know, that guy's always been like, you know, as long as I can remember, like, I'll book you a show, I'll book you a show. You know, yeah. Right. Just agree to do it. Yeah. And even yeah, when we agreed to these two, he was like, I have 10 more. And we were like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, you know. The pandemic definitely moved moved everything forward. But um, but but even back when this band like dissolved, there was never no, you know, there was no hatred, no fighting. It was just um, not amongst us anyway. No, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We we love yeah, we you know, we were all cool with each other, not amongst us, but um yeah, it was we just we didn't even you know, fight when we were together. Yeah. It was like if it was a disagreement, it was like yeah. I just pretty but, chill. Like we know there was no never any of no, never any been any of that, that vibe yeah. at no all. No kinks, no oasis, no yeah. black crows. So for us, so, <laughs> yeah, no, what, yeah, yeah. When this disbanded and what, uh, uh, when he dropped us in two thousand, you know, we've always kept in touch. We've always done little musical things here and there, yeah. and we've always, you know, jabbed that oh, we should do some stuff. So we've always kind of kept in touch. But definitely the pandemic uh, put the fire to this. So yeah. Are there any of those videos uh, where you guys all? So yeah, uh, I should be uh, sorry. I was a Zoom? little, mi- I was a little misleading. Um, all of that kind of jam video stuff was just kind of what inspired me. We never actually decided to go that route, right? Right. And do like a, a cover stuff. It's cool, but 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 again, after so many years, if we were really going to pull the trigger on something, we were like, let's dig up some of the old material. Let's write new material. We did do actually. We did do. Uh, uh, Jimmy had a cover. Material, yeah, but you tell him about the nice. cover because that was your that was your choice. It's a great. Uh, cover. Okay, so yeah, I mean, we did. Well, the first thing we did was we did a song called Dragonfly Part Two, which is like, okay, if we're gonna do this, uh, you know, let me write. Uh, I wrote something, so I kind of you know we talked about it. I said okay, and about two days later, I had a song written and demoed. I sent it to them, and they're like, all right, here we go, you know. <laughs> so we got our friend Michael Starr, who's a director. He directed a video for us for Cult St- uh, for Dragonfly Part Two. Mike Portnoy played was the guest on that video. He played drums, and Jason played uh, uh, bass and keyboard. No, he played keyboards. Wow, Brett played nice. Um, yeah, so we all kind of got together. That was the basically Fuzzbubble and Mike Portnoy kind of, and that's where Cult Stars from Mars was born. And I. You know, we did a couple more videos after that, and we did one one lyric video, and then another video uh, that our friend Michael Starr again directed. And then I had this idea that I wanted to do. Uh, the, the we've always loved the song "Blinded by the Light," the Manfred Mann version, and I'm like, it's such an epic, amazing song. I I, I want to do it, but I want to have um, uh. Mike play drums. I want to have Jeff Scott Soto do a duet vocal with Mark. And, and it was funny because this song has a weird history with the band. We would always hear it in the car going to rehearsals and Brett would always be like, I've heard, I'm tired of this song, turn it off. And Mark's like, no, I'm turning it up. So, cause we all just loved it. It became a joke. That song, every time we got it was on car, every time we got in the it car. was on. Every yeah. In LA like, blinded by the light. Right. Yeah. So good though. Yeah. Every yeah. Day. yeah. Yeah, you know, and it was like I, I, growing up, that song was on the radio all the time. I loved it. And I'm like, man, I want to redo this. So I had this idea to do it with uh, Mark and Jeff Scott Soto, who's from Sons of Apollo, and sang with Ingve, and you know, all a Damn, ton yeah. of different. He's amazing. Uh, I just heard it in my head. The two of them kind of trading uh, verses back and forth, and uh, so. I knew it was going to be a big undertaking and I wanted to do a video. So we ended up doing the video. I got uh, my friend Darian Sahanaja from the Brian Wilson band. He's the musical director for the Brian Wilson band. He's a guy I know from here in Los Angeles, a great keyboard player has all the vintage keyboards. And I asked him if he would do it. And Mike Portnoy did it. Uh, Jeff Scott Soto agreed to do it. And, uh, Melody. And we got Mike's uh, daughter, Melody, <clears throat> to sing the little theme parts at the end. So it was this big thing. A lot of people in the video, cool. a lot of crazy imagery. And uh, we even got uh, Carol Miller to do the DJ talk up at the beginning, which is for me, you know, she's a legendary from WPLJ from when I'm a kid. Yeah, so yeah, wow. all of my kind of 
everything I pictured in my head came true. Glad you're hanging out. This is Carol Miller. Oh, we've got something new, and you're really going to like this new band, Cult Stars from Mars, on New York's Best Rock. <laughs> and that was a really fun video. It took me weeks to edit it. I did the whole, we all shot it and, you know, we put it together like a pandemic video, but with lots of stuff. Branded by the lights, wrapped up like a juice, another rotor in the night. You know, That's off the chimney. It came out amazing. Yeah. It was I gotta a lot of work, out. but it was one of my favorite things I've ever done. It was because I yeah. love the song. It came out great. Mark and Jeff crushed it on the vocals you know it just it just came out really good so cool man i'm gonna check and, out uh, i one question about that song though is it uh, wrapped up like a douche what, what do they say in that song it's revved up like a deuce yeah revved up like a deuce yeah up like a deuce yeah good old revved up like good a old deuce. bruce yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Bruce springsteen smoking a lot of weed deuce was like little deuce coop as in two-seater hot rod uh, douche, of course, is a feminine hygienic procedure. It's funny. I read what that song is about. It's basically about him as a kid. Uh, the Madman was, I guess, the drummer in, his first, in the E Street band. They called him Madman. There's a whole story. Everyone, everything means something in there, you know. So, yeah, very cool, um, man. And it's a great song. And, and, and it is a great uh, song. The uh, uh, Manfred Mann did an amazing version. And when, uh, oddly enough, the guy who sang the Manfred Mann version uh, is a friend of Jeff Scott Soto. So when Jeff agreed to do it, he's like, I love the song. I'm going to send it to him. And he, he listened, you know, the guy listened to it and basically said, I love it. You That's guys awesome. nailed it. So we got the blessing, blessing from the guy who sang the actual song. Yeah. Man. So, That's huge. Yeah, so that was pretty cool. That's huge. Um, So now at back as as uh, as fuzz bubble, you're going to continue move forward. Fuzz bubble, you're going to kind of continue going on as uh, cult stars uh, moving forward with new music and, and touring and things along those lines. Uh, there's a little bit of both because we we amassed. Well, I should say amassed. That makes it sound like a tremendous amount of music. But, uh, you know, we've got a collection enough to put out a cult stars from Mars release. And so we're going to do that. And Sweet. Um, yeah. but but probably you know moving forward we'll just yeah we'll do more fuzz bubble stuff again that was a cool yeah. experiment and you know who knows maybe we'll do another one the next time they lock us maybe down we'll just do a song at a time if we get some friends you know if we get some friends yeah, you know, exactly come along and you know we got chips enough on a song and you know it's kind of, kind of cool thing to do to get get your buddy you know people you know notable people and the yeah, cool yeah. thing about it was is like it doesn't, there, there was nothing defined by it, right? So like to do a Manfred Mann song is like, what? You know, and I have Mike Portnoy play drums on it. It's like, what? Well, huh? It's just, that's you know, it's like, like living the matter. dream, yeah. Just do whatever you want, you know what I yeah. mean? It doesn't matter if, you know, oh, this song is too heavy or this song sounds like this band or that band. It, it doesn't matter. It's just yeah. like, we're doing this to keep our sanity. So, you know, whatever you want to do, we'll just throw it yeah. at the wall. It's really a fuzz bubble album with, with friends. Because a yeah, lot yeah. of the songs are like, so no, we would write for fuzz bubble anyway i think exactly i was gonna say cult stars is and, and fuzz bubble are kind of one of the same it's just cult stars was yeah. a project because brett wasn't really in the picture so and we had just the other guests you know so right. yeah yeah right the on. idea right. was so when we first did it the idea was like oh we're gonna do a podcast a month like an episode and a and release a single and uh and kind of like loosely was like it was kind of like yeah the idea i was like well kind of like a daryl's house thing you know what i mean right yeah 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 just you know have a guest pick something you want to do and just jam and, and just see if you can get the people you want on it i want to talk about those the early days with um with puffy and all that because i thought it was cool because i like i said i jason I, we we 20 something years ago you were on my, my radio show at the Crazy. time and, and we did and it was right when you first signed with puffy and you were all excited and it was a big uh, milestone type of thing because you were the first you guys were the first rock band that ever to sign with with um bad boy Still. yeah Still. Well, the only was, one <laughs> yeah the only one Just please welcome puff daddy the locks Lil kim and bad boy rock is fuzz bubble 
give it up. What was that like? Because, um, you know, I was watching the video today and it looked like Puffy was just kind of living out his rock star dream and <laughs> using you guys like as the, as the band so he could rock out. Um, what was it like working with Puffy and, and how did you guys first even meet Puffy? And how did that whole thing happen? The, the, you know, you got to go back in time a little bit and just put yourself in the in in the time frame. Right. At the time uh, where we move out from New York, we meet Jimmy. Uh, we're going to move out to California and form the band officially. And uh, we want to get a record deal, of course. So we're shopping a bunch of labels. And the story goes that the A&R guy, Puffy, wanted to start uh, a rock division of his label. Mind you, he's not an artist at the time. This is pre before he's doing any, yeah, he would get on a track and, you know, rap right. a little bit or whatever, but he was mostly like uh, being funded by Clive Davis and Arista. And he was like the guy with the Midas touch. He had all these people he was working with and anything he touched was, was on fire. And we had like lukewarm or okay responses from all the labels we wanted to be on, you know, labels like Capital and, you know, stuff like that, rock labels. And uh, the legend has it, whatever, that the A&R guy had a stack of CDs in Puffy studio. They were going through them and be like, play 10 seconds of it. No, no, next, next. They got to our CD, the CD that Dave R made on Royalty Records, the original one. And he played 15, 20 seconds, whatever, of Bliss. And he said, okay, stop it. That's the band. I want that band. Get that band. So at the time, like, we know who he is, but like not... You can't think of it by any, I don't even remember if he was puffy. No, so I, I'll actually interject. So yeah, this was, I think it. it was September of, of 96. We all knew puffy of, he was a vibe, you know, on the cover of vibe magazine. Right. I think it was, um, yeah, I don't know if he was called. Yeah. May, maybe he was puffy, but we just knew he was a more, you know, he wasn't he was an the guy artist. With notorious B.I.G. Right. Exactly. Yeah. He so the he, guy behind notorious B.I.G. Right. Right. Who was you? Right, exactly. Yep. Yeah. So, so yeah. Biggie was was huge then when the, when you guys were coming. Biggie was yeah. big, starting yeah. to become big. Starting. Yeah, to yeah, become yeah. Big. Yep, he was starting exactly. Yep. Yeah. So, the, so the bad boy <laughs> label was just was just starting to break. Right, and, yep. and he, he had been, the idea. Puffy had. Sorry, sorry, Puffy had been yeah. at uh, what was it MCA previous, and that's where he really got his start and his reputation. I think he signed Mary J. Blige. Mary J. Blige, yeah. yeah. And that's kind of where he got all his juice from. Then he started his own label. And when we came into the picture with him, he was this guy that was kind of ready to blow up, but hadn't yet. Like my our manager called me up and I didn't know who he was. He said, he's a big hip hop producer. He's like the, one of the big, biggest guys in the business. I'm like, well, what business does he have with us? Right. And he says, I don't know, but he's he's on his way up. He's got a lot of money and a lot of juice, right. and and also let's go play for him. And also, one, and one other thing. So I remember when. We, so this was September when we went to play for him. So I know at that time there was a two pack shooting, and this was still East Coast West Coast. Two pack had uh, gotten right. shot at. I don't was he. I don't know if he was killed, but he would. He had gotten shot at, and I remember everyone was goofing joking at us like we gotta wear your bulletproof vest to the audition we'll go with, you know? <laughs> yeah because that's the time no, when, no seriously yeah. so but yeah, we were, they like, were there fucking, you and, know, yeah. and it's so, but crazy that was the, how much that actually ties into the story so yeah we, we're courting you know we're being courted but we're trying to court labels with our managers you know we're having in you know dreams of being on the capital label with the orange and yellow swirl because that's Beatles, that's Beach <laughs> right. Boys. Yeah. Yeah. At one point, I don't remember if it's at that time, but at one point the Foo Fighters end up on Capitol. So we're like, oh, right, yeah, like that's yeah. where we want to be, whatever. <clears throat> but then the notion kind of crosses our minds of that. Well, if you're the only rock band on a label and this guy's, you know, fired up to take over the world and like would use phrases like that, <laughs> like, okay, right. you know what I mean? The criteria of, of making a bad boy record is, is really paying attention to the details. So um, I'll give you a condensed version, but th this back and forth goes for a while. And like Mark said, we're playing for him. And in many cases, they're just like private showcases. It's like us at the end of a long room and him at the other end with two bodyguards and just 
nodding to us like, play another one play another one play another one <laughs> a little awkward but we're like whatever you know it's cool he was cool to us you know whatever so he was playing that whole game with you guys that that kind of head games the power trip stuff like sitting at the end of the big table and you guys I mean, playing for the game i don't think in the way it was yeah it was meant to be like intimidating right but i i but i do think that like the two worlds were like we were both equally unfamiliar with the way we work. <laughs> right, right, right. So yeah. we're not like in the hip hop world, and he's not in the rock world. So it's just like, hi. <laughs> right, yeah. He wasn't coming to the Mercury Lounge right. to see one of our shows. Yeah, he wasn't going to see exactly. He wasn't no. gonna, he's right. He's we, you, you know you have, you have to go to Puffy, and that was always the way. You got to go to him. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Cool. So we go back and forth, and and. To his credit, I will say this was a, a pretty smart idea. He's really interested in the band and he got fired up again by the uh, initial record. It never got released, but it was going to be the indie release on royalty. He gets fired up by that. And then he's like, um, okay, well, we want to put you guys in the studio and see what you come up with. This is before we get signed or anything. So it's kind of a good idea. I like to see like, well, do you guys just have 10 songs and that's the end of the story. Like, what if I told you to write something tonight kind of thing? Right. What, yeah. what would you come up with? So we end up getting put in the studio down uh, by the Port Authority bus terminal it's called Daddy's House. It was his like proprietary label studio. And we're in the studio with Notorious B.I.G. sometimes like he's there. And same thing. It's like, hey, he's like, hey, what's up? And we're like, rock band. He's like, B.I.G. We're like, cool. <laughs> That's it. That's you know, cool, man. Yeah. <clears throat> excuse me so we're you know putting together some material and it's going back and forth but ultimately he says you know we're going to sign a deal and we're very excited about this there's a lot of things swirling around him and again magazine covers and mtv and and all this stuff and it really looks like yeah he's he's got the magic touch and so we're going to do this and um mark what did you say like a year passed between like the courtship and the signing Less. December of 96, we auditioned from Mar March of 97 the next year, which is what, six, seven months later, that's when Biggie gets shot. One of the best-selling rap artists was killed in Los Angeles in a hail of gunfire. Yeah, you cut and don't, don't ruin the ending yet. <laughs> All right, so I don't want nah, to... He ahead. knows, who knows, yeah, who doesn't know he got shot? Right. right. Okay, don't worry yeah. about that. So, yeah, so Biggie gets shot in March of 97. That slows things up entirely right. because... Okay, so yeah. So yeah, that's what I was getting to. So here's here's the dramatic version of that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to give a shorter version, you know. I know, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm so close. Yeah, so I know. Close. <laughs> no, I'm they say, it hey, hey, we're gonna sign, we're gonna sign you guys. It's a big deal. They're like, we're gonna fly. We were back in New York doing the demos at Daddy's house. We're gonna fly you out to LA. They're gonna have this big party uh, on Wilshire and La Brea at the what is it, the auto museum? The Peterson Auto Museum. Thank you. And um, we're going to take pictures. It's going to be in Vibe Magazine. And Puffy is announcing, I'm starting a rock division. And this is the rock band. Boom. We're like, amazing. And so we go out and we fly out. And like last minute, they're like, ah, actually, you know what? We're not going to announce it in Vibe. You guys don't have to go to a party. It's, it's really a very heavy hip hop thing. And so is Vibe Magazine. So instead, actually, we're going to announce you guys in Rolling Stone. So we're like, that's amazing. Yeah. And that's like dream come true, right? I, right? I'd rather be in Rolling Stone. We're a rock band. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's huge. So we don't, we don't go to the party. But at that party, they shoot into the SUV and they try to kill Puffy and they kill Biggie. Damn. So that was the, that was the party that, yeah. That was the party we were supposed, we were to, supposed go to go to that, take the pictures. Now, there's no way we were going to be in that SUV. I'm not saying that. Right. But it was that night. And what it did do uh, subsequently is shut down the label. Yeah. All, bu all business stopped and a murder investigation ensued. As Biggie Smalls was shot from a passing vehicle. He had been named Rap Artist of the Year at the Billboard Awards in 1995. He was considered a rival of West Coast rapper Tupac Shakur. Yeah. Yeah. You guys were, were, were a part of that whole whirlwind of of bad boy right at that that time period like you said yeah. the the shooting had taken place um you know the first shooting of tupac 
it, yeah. I think both Biggie and Puffy were there in the building that day. That's why yeah. um, he yeah, was so adamant. Whole... Yeah, mm-hmm. about that. And then, um, yeah, and then after that, um, Biggie ended up getting shot and, and killed. He was killed, killed first, or Tupac was Tupac was killed first. I forget Tupac which one, but was killed Tupac first. Was first. This was revenge for the Tupac. Yeah, murder, supposedly, right? Allegedly, yeah. yeah. And so, so, what this does, other than being like a crazy traumatic traumatic event you know obviously it's you know it's nuts you know um it shuts down the label again rightfully so because they're like uh uh, hello (laughs) like we got to figure out what's going on but then what it also does is it takes out puffy's number one artist on the label yeah whether whether he meant to do it or not puffy does a tribute to biggie maybe he just meant i was just going to do that period end of story but that track where he samples the sting every breath you take and does i'll be missing you takes off like a rocket ship and the next thing you know he's like oh i'm the number one artist on bad bad boy right (laughs) and that's where we start to fall in the list of priorities he didn't completely abandon us at that point other things happen after that very cool things happen after that but but in hindsight it's you know looking back it's the beginning of the end he went he, from a lab, running a label to being the number one artist yeah. on the label and and still running a label and, and everything that goes on yeah. with that. So all of a sudden, you know, the label becomes a vanity label where it's like you got the famous artist and it's his label. And now responsibility number one is to keep the famous artist as big as possible. And he yeah. owns the label. So everything else just kind of kind of hits a wall. You know, and then a clothing and, label and a restaurant. Right, and, then he's know, doing everything and all kinds of things. You know, dating J Lo and you know, right. Well, yeah, I'll blame so, him, but it, it wasn't great for us. So now, for you guys at that point, what are you thinking? What are you guys talking to each other about? Like uh, when all this is going down, like, hey, uh, we have to get out of this mess, or how, or do we stay all along and see what happens. Yeah, next? I don't think so. Then, right, guys, we weren't thinking that then. Like, no, no, we were just like, okay, well, we gotta like, wait. And you know, yeah. a lot of uh, a lot of great frustration leads to great songs, and I did write a couple songs about yeah. it. Um, <laughs> hey, and here's the thing: <laughs> you know, we, th- this is what this really held up for us was the signing. So. So the idea anyway, if if it was uninterrupted, we would have signed, but then we would have went into the studio and made the record, which, which we do end up doing. But so at that point, yeah, there was no, I mean, again, it was a tragedy and that's a crazy story unto itself. But as far as us, we were like, okay, well, like, geez, you know, like, let's let everyone get settled and then we're going to make a record. They're going to release us and life is going to go on. So at that point, we yeah, it wasn't really a call to like jump ship. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then um did he ever did you guys ever release the record through them? Through Not Bad through Boy? Bad Boy. No. no. Yeah. So that Not so you guys Boy. were held up. How long were you held up after all this was going on? Like yeah, since Mark's you signed with the dates. Mark's got the diary. Mark's what what's uh what's the story with the uh timeline? Um oh, sure. I wish I had my book in front, but I think uh, so. The re- reason why we really jumped ship because while during the waiting period through all this, there were cool things that they implemented. Like I think the first thing that happened was it's all about the Benjamins rock remix while we're recording the record. Um, and that wound up, you know, we that were recording huge. the record and it won an MTV award and they're announcing on when they play the video, fuzz bubbles attached to the, you know, to the, the, to the on bottom. There, yeah. That happened first. And then, you know, and uh, we were in that video. Yeah, we're, we're in the video in as video. extras, as, you know, whatever. Uh, you know, I got um, then uh, they, they put us on the Godzilla soundtrack. You know, Puffy, uh, you know, says went to Sony. He's like, I, I want my rock band on this record, you know, because that was, you know, the record that he did uh, the remake with uh, Jimmy Page, the Cashmere remake. So, you know, the Godzilla soundtrack happened. Um, we begged and, you know, we were killing them to go out on the road and, you know, do a little tour. So they gave us some money. We actually got to go out and do a little van tour and play South by Southwest and kind of become a band, which we never you know, were able to do. Um, so that happened in, uh, I think, 98, uh, 98, 99. Yeah. You know, we so. recorded our record, though, like 97, 98 and part of 99, we were 
kind of recording our record. The most, yeah. I would say the, the crux of the recording, most of it was done 97, 98. Yeah. yeah. And then it was, you know, it was constant wait for this, wait for that. You know, we got to the point where we mastered the record with, with George Marino. I mean, we had a, a record master. Oh yeah. It was yeah. a legit, we had a real budget. Um, yeah. You know, I've said yeah, this before people, but um, you know, it was, it was never so bad enough to be like, all right, this is ridiculous. You know, right, I mean? right. Yeah. And it was never great enough to be like, what do you, you know, there's no worries here. Like, it yeah, was because there were great things middle. happening. Hey, right. And along with that, yeah, we got to do some TV performances. Uh, Keenan Ivory Way in show. We did a live MTV show right. with All About the Benjamins. We got to play Giant Stadium with Slash and Jimmy Page. So, all this, yeah, cool, yeah. all these really cool things were happening. Um, but in between a lot of waiting and a lot of like, you know, you know, what's, you know, what about us? You know, we did, and we just wanted to be, we just wanted to make it happen. We wanted to just be productive and just, you know, let's, let's get on with this, you know, so. Yeah. Just please welcome Puff Daddy, the Lots, Lil' Kim, and Bad Boy Rockets Fuzz Bubble. Give it up. When we first moved from New York to LA, me, Brett, and Mark, um, it's very, very, it's a very short amount of time that we're a band together before we're involved in the bad boy thing. So, so everything just kind of moves fast. Less than a year, like eight months. Yeah. 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 yeah we had I, 10 gigs under our belt when we got shows. Yeah, yeah. to give you a timeline. Wow. So fe February 11th of 96, we move out to California. By, by September, we're showcasing for Puffy. So it was only a handful of months that we got to, you know, rehearse and get our shit together play a matter of like 10 shows in la and then we did a cmg you know the cmj festival in in uh in in new york city um yeah. in and september and that was yeah. when we showcased for puffy at that same time so it was just very quick you know wow quick. so moving that fast when you guys are younger and and you know didn't really know the business do, do you feel like you, you know would you have done that again now if all of a sudden that this uh you know uh, well, you know that's not, a fair, that's not a fair question because we know how it turns out. Right. <laughs> yeah. I could answer that. No. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the recordings that you did there, did you get to keep those or are those in a vault somewhere? Bad boy. Like, uh, well, we released them. Yeah, you did on another label. Right. So I, I didn't know if those are the same recordings. We, we self-released it because we wanted, I wanted, you know, I wanted people to hear the music, you know? Yeah. Yeah. For this sure. Great record with, you know, Mike Clanky produced Appetite for Destruction. You know, we recorded my favorite UFO records. This guy, you know, we, we got an yeah. amazing full big studio, big budget record. Jack Joseph Puig makes it probably the top mixer in the business. Um, and George and Marino like, put the icing. Exactly. George so we had this Marino. great, great finished product that just had, you know, we wanted people to hear it. So. Right. And I'm just like, there's no way I'm going to my grave without people getting this record in their hands. Yeah. As, as many or as few as there are. So, you know, when we went in and got ourselves, we basically asked to get dropped from the label because we knew we didn't have time and they didn't care anymore. So we were like, we went in there, got dropped. And he said, if you guys can get another deal, great. You know, take the record around, shop it. If not, do what you got to do. So I took that as well. You know, a bunch, you know, we played for a bunch of labels and, you know, our, our friend Dave again took the, you know, he set up showcases and, you know, everyone viewed us sort of as damaged goods. To me, it's really stupid because we were on a multi a multi platinum soundtrack, and we're on an MTV award winning yeah, MTV man. video. So, what they refer to as setup in the business, where it's like you do all this stuff to make the artist really well known, then you put the record out. Right. All of that kind of groundwork was already done. So yeah. it was amazing to me that no one would say, "Okay, let's pick this record up. It's a good record." You know, even if they didn't like the record, they know that they could could have just put it out and been off to a really good start sales wise, you know. So yeah. um, after all that, you know, after, you know, trying our manager basically gave up. He just kind of checked out. Um, and so Dave said, I, I, I got to do something. I got to get this record signed. Eventually, no one wanted to do it. And we, you know, we lived on two different coasts. So I was like guys, I'm just going to put this out myself and whatever happens, happens. So that, and that's it. And over the years, uh, 
enough people got it in their hands. We took a lot of the other stuff and released another CD called Demos, Outtakes, and Rarities with a lot of the outtakes from the record and the early demos. And we released some singles in Japan and little labels. And, oh, you know, no. we kind of over the last 20 years, you know, more and more people learned about the band just like, oh, did you hear this? This is band, you know, because Power Pop has a really big underground because none of the Power Pop bands really got very big. A couple right. of them. Um, so yeah. we, end, you know, we ended up just becoming one of those bands and like, oh, man, this band should have been big. Listen to this record, you know. And that's kind of where we're at now, where it's like sort of a cult band, you know, so. Dude, I'll tell you, all the songs, they still hold up, man. Out there, ordinary, Thank real you. world. Like, they're all really great, solid songs that that help, that help stand the test of time. And and uh, people who are watching this that might not be familiar with Fuzzbubble or, or your history or your music should check those out. They're, you can find them on, on YouTube, iTunes, all that stuff. Yeah. Bandcamp. Um, you can buy all the stuff on Bandcamp. On Bandcamp. Yeah, yeah check out their Bandcamp. Um, yeah, you guys have had that link, I think, forever, right? <laughs> I remember uh, back in the, in the day, I was checking you guys out on Bandcamp. And now here we are. You guys are getting ready to do the show. It's already sold out. The one with, with Zebra, another you know Long Island based band. And man, you guys must be so stoked because the the other ones almost sold out too, right? Both shows you have coming up in November are like so. Pe if you didn't get your tickets yet, you could still catch them on the 18th at the Garage yeah. in Pleasantville. But um, but, but the other ones sold out. What's next for you guys? What are you What are you seeing in the future? What's the future hold for for Fuzz Bubble? Uh, well, you know what? We love recording, so I, you know, I want to just record more music and then play more. You know, if we can get more shows, it's obviously it's a little difficult. You know, two of us have to either go west or go east. Um, but you know, I think there's a way we can figure it out where we can do it. You know, I, I would like to play more shows because I, I love this band and I feel like we have a lot of unfinished business to make up for. Um, totally. You know, recording's easy. We all have recording capabilities at our house. Um, so we can do that and just write more songs and record more and, the, you know, make make a, another fuzz bubble record. You know, not a cult stars record, but a fuzz bubble record. And, you know, play shows, but we have to get on good shows. You know, that's the thing we can't, we can't, we could always do a little club show, but there has to be some sort of bigger anchor show that that's going to kind of get us, you know, all together to do it. So that's what I would too like much to do. involved with the logistics, you know what I mean? Yeah. To like, I don't know what like, you guys want to do. Yeah. That's what I want to do. So, you know. <laughs> That sounds good to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, I miss it. I really do. I, I, I miss playing with this band. It's always yeah. been my favorite band. So yeah. Yeah. So yeah. me too. And the chemistry is oh, yeah. good. We got great songs. We know how to, we know how to bring it live. And that's kind of what I want to do. And, you know, it's, you know, time is uh, rapidly moving. You know, like I said, we lost our exactly. bass player last year. Um, and it really gets you to think like, okay, man, you just don't know. So, yeah. and we've all, we've lost a lot of friends over the years, you know, too many for the ages that we're at and, yeah, you know, man. life is short. So, you know, rock as hard as you can while you can. So damn right, man. It, and, uh, life is short and it's, it's great to see you guys, you know, back together and, uh, and doing this and, you know, uh, God bless Brett and, and, uh, his family yeah, and everybody, but, uh, but yeah, the, the, I think that the positive that came out of it is it kind of got you guys together and, and um, saying, hey, man, you know, let's finish what we started. And uh, it's never too late, man. We are 20 years later. You guys all look great. Yeah. Okay, you're ready to rock. <laughs> It's a song. I hope we sound. I hope we sound good. <laughs> yeah. We won't know until uh, we get in the room together. But. You know how we told you we had like ten days to play, like ten shows before we got signed. <laughs> We're gonna have about forty-eight hours before the reunion gigs. <laughs> We do yeah. yeah, no. Yeah. Like, me and Jason are rehearsing here. Uh, you know, I have a rehearsal room, and you know, at least the me and him could play and get just kind of get them. It's muscle memory, you know, really what it yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just just getting back to you know doing what you did. So me and Jason have been you know once a week, you know, hitting it in the rehearsal room and playing the songs, you know, and then uh, 
we'll get together and, and hopefully it'll come together quick. You know, yeah. not what adrenaline yeah, right. will make up. It should. Adrenaline will make up for everything yeah. else. <laughs> yeah, Dude, it's it's exactly. gonna be awesome, man. It's gonna yeah. be awesome. Yeah. Um, just let everybody know where they could find you and and listen to your music and and all that good stuff for uh, for both you know uh, Fuzz Bubble and uh, the the uh, the cult. Yeah, cult stars from Mars cult and Fuzz Bubble. You can all find on Bandcamp, Bandcamp.com. I think you just go slash Fuzz Bubble. Just go to Bandcamp dot com and search you can search the bands and you could buy stuff or listen to the stuff there too um we have some friends particularly this guy steve messina i don't know if you know him that guy's been shooting uh you know photographs on long island for forever yeah, and ever he's like at every show yeah that, yeah that dude went into the archives and found some video of us and stuff from rehearsals and playing back in like 96 he's been putting some stuff up on youtube so you could just search fuzz bubble there and then on the socials, you know, whatever, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. And I've got, again, like you said, the Zebra show is sold out. So there's no real link for that. Um, but I've got the link for the Lucy's and Pleasantville in those socials in the bio. So you could just click that and buy the tickets through Event Tribe. I think they're like 23 bucks, a little handling fee. Twenty-five dollars, yeah. something like that. Hey man, it's, it's worth it. Yeah, yeah it's gonna it's be a awesome. Small place. If it's a uh, capacity is about one hundred twenty-five, so that'll be a nice. It'll be a nice little room, you it's know. A club. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's when you rock cool. out. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, we do our thing, you know. Yeah, and then I don't know. Uh, yeah, Paramount, like I said, is sold out. I mean, there's some stuff that's like resale tickets on, but they're like kind of ridiculous prices. But then, Mark, do they also have like people could walk up for general admission, or is that? Well, I don't know how much they're going to squeeze in because from what the map you showed, there's, 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 a, there's so many rows of seats in the front and then there's Gen GA, general mission in the back and right. the side. So, I mean, they could probably do walk up. I don't know what the capacity is, but I'm sure they could squeeze in more, right. you know? So, well, I mean, we'll see. Yeah. But we're not and, responsible. Uh, pizza at Little Vincent's <laughs> before, you know? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah Little Vincent's right there, yeah. Yeah, there you little go. Yeah. <laughs> little plug for a uh, little Vincent. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now you guys, uh, yeah. Hey, I, I'm gonna do that. That's awesome. I love peace. I beats. I beats. I beats. You you guys rock, man. I appreciate uh, you guys uh, taking the time to talk to me about all this stuff. Um, yeah. Anything else before we go? You want to get out there? You know, just th thanks for the opportunity, man. It's it's yeah, cool. It has us, man. this is really cool. Thank you. It's been so a long much. time, and again, it does you know feel like you know. I mean, a lot of time has passed, and you know, it's easier to get a little bitter over time. But it's nice to meet people that remember the band and and still like the stuff and are interested in what we're doing. That's uh, you know, we're very humbled and grateful by that. For that, yeah, awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks again, guys. Fuzz Bubble, everybody, please check them out. These guys are awesome. Uh, take care, dudes. Cool. Thank, Thank you, man. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh.